This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, police are searching for the person who robbed the Camden National Bank on Main Street in Oakland this morning. Sergeant Tracy Frost with the Oakland Police Department says officers responded to a bank alarm just before 10 a.m. Units from the Maine State Police, Maine Warden Service, and Waterville PD also responded to the scene. Schools in the area were placed on lockdown with no one being allowed to enter for about an hour. The suspect is described as a white male with a baseball cap and a plaid shirt. He was last seen on foot leaving the area. He left with an undisclosed amount of cash. The investigation remains ongoing at this time. Anyone with information is asked to contact Deputy Chief Stubert or Officer Tim Locke at 465-2202. Local firefighters have released more details after finding a plow truck engulfed in flames during the weekend's winter storm. Orland firefighters responded to Cedar Swamp Road early Saturday morning following reports of a plow truck on fire. Lieutenant Matt Gray of the Orland Fire Department says firefighters received the call at 419 a.m. The driver reportedly got out of the vehicle safely before firefighters arrived. Although no official cause has been determined, officials speculate the fire may have been started by a faulty hydraulic line. The fire out eventually, it was certainly more challenging than your, than your average vehicle fire just because of the size and the, the makeup of a, of a commercial vehicle. It's got a large fuel tank and some of the fuel was, was on fire, so that, that added to the, to the difficulty. Lieutenant Gray says the fire was quickly put out. According to Orleans Fire Department, there were no reported injuries. Well, funeral services are being held this week for some of the victims of a deadly crash in Castine. Four Maine Maritime Academy students were killed last weekend when a vehicle hit a tree and burst into flames. Dozens turned out for a candlelight vigil last night in Gardner for one of the victims. 21-year-old Chase Fawcett was remembered for his love of the outdoors and spending time with his family and friends. A funeral service for Fawcett was held in Gardner today. Tomorrow, a funeral will be held for the other victim from Maine. A, a service for 20-year-old Brian Keneally will be held in his hometown of York. Three other students survived the accident and are being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The first public hearing to discuss an emergency heating assistance package for Mainers is set for Wednesday. A.J. Douglas spoke to the Senate president to learn what leaders of the initiative are hoping to accomplish. Governor Janet Mills' initial heating and housing plan was blocked earlier this month by a handful of Senate Republicans. Now, like-minded Democrats and Republicans have announced temporary appointments to the legislature's Appropriations and Financial Affairs Committee. That committee is preparing for the first public hearing for revisions to the Winter Emergency Energy Relief Package. That hearing is scheduled for Wednesday. I am always supportive of the public hearing process and the fact that I don't think anyone doesn't understand that, uh, you know, we're in a real heating crisis here across the state. The energy package will consist of $398 million to finance one-time $450 energy relief payments to households that meet income requirements, similar to the $850 relief checks. Senate President Troy Jackson says the Senate previously rejected the energy relief package due to the lack of public comment on the proposal. Uh, after we have this public hearing process uh, on Wednesday, I'm hopeful that uh, you know we do come together, actually do something meaningful for the people across the state. During the week of December 12th, 13,000 households received one-time payments of $500 for older Mainers over the age of 65, meeting specific income requirements of $18,000 for individuals and $20,000 for families. We know that when people can't stay warm, especially if they're older or if they're young children, they're more likely to get sick. And what does that mean? They're getting preventable illnesses that could lead them to have high doctor costs or for older people, even be hospitalized and enter a nursing home. The Maine Department of Health and Human Services is working to complement the governor's initiative to bring financial relief for heating costs as prices hit record highs. To make sure that we are both providing relief to a broader set of Maine residents, as in the governor's plan, as well as providing this immediate one-time assistance on a short-term basis to our older residents. 
AJ Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. Well, the first snowstorm of the season came and went over the weekend, and where you live in Maine determined how much of the white stuff you saw. Snowflakes started falling Friday night into Saturday, and for many, it continued snowing through much of the day Sunday as well. According to the National Weather Service, several towns in Waldo County saw anywhere from four to eight inches of snow, while towns in Oxford County saw a foot or two. The people we spoke with had mixed feelings about the storm. It was uh, beautiful. It was a beautiful ride coming down the highway covering all the trees. It was just a gorgeous little sight. Well, I live in Franklin, so we didn't get as much as you guys did. So you're, you guys can keep it? It wasn't too bad. Um, it was the rain that kind of really dragged it out. You know, it, it should have been a half a day or a day. It's that time of year to get it. We enjoy it. Well, meteorologists are saying another storm that may consist mostly of rain is heading our way this week as well. And with that in mind, we can take a first look at our forecast. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping it's more snow. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. we were calling for snow or at least hoping for snow. Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, we certainly got it up here, but uh, it sounds like a, a big mix across the state. Well, uh, we'll see. The, we'll wait and see what's coming our way. We'll now. see what's coming our way. Let's get that first check. All right, Beth and Peter, thank you. Happy Monday. Your first weather is brought to you by Kings Mountain RC. And okay, so for us, temperatures did what they're supposed to do today. Highs near 34 here in Bangor, 35 Bar Harbor, but warmer temperatures are on the way. We could actually do 50 by the end of the week. For right now, though, not so much, right? A north southeast wind here earlier today has now switched out of the northwest, bringing in cooler temperatures for us tonight. And there is a little bit of flurry action out there as well. Lots of cloud cover, a couple flurries tonight. It won't be a big deal. We could see oh, a dusting of snow tonight. And then we look forward to this system. That one and that one will be joining our area uh, later on Friday. Uh, that can make a mess for your holiday travel plans at the end of the week. Our forecast, though, tonight, though, is partly cloudy skies with low temperatures down near 30. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth and Peter. All righty, Jeff. Thanks so much. Coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, the Maine Forest and Logging Museum in Bradley gets a helping hand from a local Eagle Scout. And Maine Jewelry and Art announces it'll be closing its doors after a dozen years in business. We'll have those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. Did you know that Renewal by Anderson will replace your windows any time of the year and in any weather? Made with our exclusive Fibrix material, which is vastly superior to vinyl, never needs painting, and resists warping and bowing. We custom build your replacement windows in the USA and back them with the nation's best warranty. Call Renewal by Anderson for your free consultation. Don't miss this money-saving deal with great financing. Installation is always included. Call now. Planning your holiday meals and parties? Don't forget about visiting W.A. Bean & Sons in Bangor, just minutes from the Broadway exit in the Beaumark Industrial Park. Come see why W.A. Bean was voted best butcher shop in Bangor as you get your fillet strips of ribeyes custom cut by professional butchers. Try one of their famous honey glazed spiral hams or smoked turkey or chicken. Open on site Monday through Friday. Main products made by Maine people. W.A. Bean & Sons. Quality meats since 1860. Napa knows great holiday savings. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts has the perfect gift for everyone this year. Lightweight, durable, and designed for comfort. Milwaukee's heat-on-demand jackets and hoodies are the perfect cold-weather gear. And stay warm even longer with a free battery when you purchase any M12 heated gear. Find the perfect gift this holiday season for you or anyone on your list. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Do you have leaky pipes? Are you planning a plumbing job? Is your heating system working right? Are you designing a plumbing project? Then contact Harley's Plumbing and Heating Plus. If your toilet will not flush, Harley will be there in a rush. Furnace bit the dust today. Harley crew is on the way. Harley Plumbing. Harley Heating. 990-2200. Call now. Harley! Call or visit online. Have you ever walked into a jewelry store and just gotten overwhelmed? Pushy salesmen, sky-high prices, and they don't even have what you want. Well, that's not the experience you get from Quality Jewelers. Our team does not work on commission, so that means our common goal of finding you the perfect piece is paramount. Our mission is to give you the best experience possible, providing service after the sale and earning your business for life. 
So make those memories with us here at Quality Jewelers. Quality Jewelers, locally owned and operated, Penobscot Plaza, Bangor. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. For more than a year, Bangor City Councilors have been debating how to spend the American Rescue Plan Act funding they received. Recovery centers across the city are urging councilors to act more swiftly. Matthew Jaronsik has the story. After receiving $20 million in funds from the American Rescue Plan Act last year, Bangor City Councilors are still debating about where to allocate the money. City Councilors have acknowledged the drug addiction crisis is getting worse and worse. So far, discussions have centered around purchasing more detox beds, but Wellspring Executive Director Suzanne Farley points to another area of need. Right now what we need here in Bangor for sure are uh, some relief for affordable housing. Safe, decent, affordable housing for people to afford is really where I think that money should be targeted. While I think detox beds may be a need in the state of Maine, our, our records show that we're meeting the need right now. Bangor-based recovery centers are pushing for a multi-pronged approach to help solve the issue. We talked about a three-fold investment. Uh, one is in housing, two is in mental health, and three is in substance use recovery. So that's what we've been asking for for a year and a half, year and a quarter to be accurate now, really uh, asking the city to make that kind of investment. And Bangor with Bangor being one of six evaluate. municipalities that received funding from Congress, Farley believes the funds are a golden opportunity to address the issue. I would love to see um, a residential program that's the next level of care up for those folks that don't qualify for outpatient. And it's only 30 or 45 days because we don't have enough available treatment for the next level of care after they detox. However, with other issues such as providing more service to the years. elderly, and now infrastructure, the and even making Bangor more modern, City Councilor Gresham Schaefer says there should be more funds to benefit everyone. We should make sure that we are using this money that impacts all residents so that we are not leaving out um, children, senior citizens. Uh, you know, I, I know that there's a great need for housing and homelessness services, but I want to make sure that we are thinking of all of our population. Matthew Jaronsik, ABC7 and Fox 22. The Maine County Soil and Conservation District will enter a three-year contract with the Maine chapter of the Nature Conservatory in an effort to restore local waters. The TNC will use funds from the Regional Conservation Partnership Program funded by the USDA. The watershed scale approach to restoring stream systems is a program developed to restore aquatic organisms by opening aquatic passage in streamways or by providing culverts. This program will increase the opportunities to connect fish habitats to streams and strengthen road infrastructure. Piscataquis County is the uh, largest forested county in the state of Maine, and we do a lot of um, there's a lot of harvesting and logging operations in the forestry community. Um, so we need to be able to access certain roads and, and this allows bridge work to be completed um, safely. So that's in that's helping the forest economy. Those interested in learning more about the stream restoration opportunities can log on to Piscataquis SWCD.org. Maine Jewelry and Art will be closing its doors after bringing beauty to downtown Bangor for a dozen years. Our Jody Hersey stopped by the store to find out why. COVID really was very difficult and um, a lot of people are not going out to shop anymore. And also where the inflation and all the problems in trying to go food shopping and gas and oil, people are not buying the way they used to buy. The retail market isn't what it used to be, which is why Roxanne Monksgard, Amanda Coburn, and Ann Rigstead have decided it's time for a change at Maine Jewelry and Art in Bangor. Amanda has relocated, um, and um, Ann and I are getting up there in years. We really would like to, quote, retire. That's why Maine Jewelry and Art will be available online only beginning February 1st, 2023 where all of the owner's products already exist. Not being able to shop in the brick and mortar business will be difficult for some, especially Donna Comstock. I am going to be miss being able to come in and see all the beautiful things that are in here. I'll miss being able to 
see and touch and feel. Um, that's kind of buyer I am. However, moving to an online store will allow the owners to try new opportunities. I've been asked to teach and I've never had the time because of running a store. I've also um, had people who've wanted to collaborate with me, other artists. So I'm looking forward to maybe doing some big mosaics. Maine Jewelry and Art is hosting a last hurrah at the store this Thursday night from 5 to 7 p.m. We were all three at the point where we were ready to move on and do this online thing. Full time, yeah. And, and we're looking forward to it, actually. In Bangor, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. And still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, an outdoor adventure company encourages women and girls of all ages to enjoy Maine's natural beauty. And in sports, one hand in track and field standout has committed to the University of Maine. We'll have that story right after the break. Twas the week before Christmas. Seems the big national stores had quit. Their shelves kind of empty, as if to say, sorry, that's it. But Rennie's keeps pushing and filling their shelves with candy, food, toys, clothing, and everything else. Don't make the big box mistake or keep shopping online. Be safe and satisfied in this, the final stretch. It's Rennie's time. New England Bible College and Seminary in Bangor and South Portland wishes you a very Merry Christmas celebrating Christ. Happy Holidays from Taylor Events and Equipment Rental, 1179 Hammond Street, Bangor. Happy Holidays from all of us at the Bankery and Skowhegan Florist. Visit us for fresh eating and fresh scents this season. Listen, I'm done settling because this is my secret. I put it on once. No more touch-up. Secret has pH balancing minerals, and it helps eliminate odor instead of just masking it. So pull it in close. Secret works. Suffering from sinus congestion, especially at night? Try Vix Sinex for instant relief that lasts up to 12 hours. Vix Sinex targets congestion at the source, relieving nasal congestion and sinus pressure by reducing swelling in the sinuses. Try Vix Sinex. Hello, this is George Whelan with Down East Direct Cremation. We are this year's proud sponsors of the Salvation Army Christmas Toy Drive. Each year, the Salvation Army collects interesting, new, unopened, and unwrapped toys to ensure that every good boy and girl receives a gift on Christmas morning. This year, the need is greater than ever. We invite you to join with Santa, his elves, and all the rest of us to make this possible by bringing your gift for a good girl or boy to WKIT Radio at 861 Broadway in Bangor and placing it under the zone tree. From there, Santa, his elves, and the Salvation Army will make sure our donated gifts are wrapped and delivered to a good boy or girl in time for them to open on Christmas morning. Together, we can be the blessing to make a child's Christmas merrier and New Year happier. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Securitas Security Services. Securitas Security Services is hiring in coastal and central Maine. If interested, please call 207-990-1777. Welcome back in, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for staying with us. We will start on the track here. After a dominant junior season and a state championship this fall, one Hamden Academy track star has committed to continue his career as a black bear. The Broncos senior star Charlie Collins committed to UMaine last week. The senior distance runner won the PVC large school title in the 1600 and 3200 meter races this past year and finished top 10 in Class A for both events in spring. That was the outdoor season. He also won the Class A state title in cross country this past fall. As for how he feels about this great accomplishment, Collins is just glad he can finally exhale. It's very relieving. I don't have to worry about all of the work going into committing to college anymore. I can mostly just focus on the training and the work I need to put into getting ready for next year and the rest of this year. Helping his prep is Hamden Academy's head track coach Jason Cash. Knowing Collins and his abilities, it was no surprise to him that Collins is taking the next step. And while he already has that next step planned out, Charlie still has a pretty high bar set. 
Well, he has an incredible work ethic, and that's that's first and foremost. That's that's what's going to take you a long way in this sport is being able to n not just set your goals, but to understand the work that it takes to achieve those goals. And he's set lofty ones, and he's set lofty expectations for himself with regard to how he goes about achieving those goals. And uh, he comes through when he does that. I'd like to win a couple state titles in the 16 and maybe the 8 or the 32. I'm not quite sure yet. And. We'd like to get a 4x8 win, so another team kind of dynamic there. And I'd like to chase after the uh, state mile record for indoor. All right, wishing him luck this season in indoor and outdoor before he heads to Orono. Let's move on to the Patriots. We, we kind of have to talk about what happened on Sunday in Las Vegas. I don't want to do it. I don't even want to look at it again, but here we go. New England was down 14 at halftime. They clawed, clawed all the way back to tie the game and take a lead before a controversial touchdown call tied it up at 24. So the New England had the ball back, and somehow this happened. After a long run right here from Ramondre Stevenson, he's going to just kind of toss it to Jacoby Myers at the end of this play, who went and threw it all the way across the field to Mac Jones. Anyway, that resulted in this Raiders walk-off touchdown from Chandler Jones, and the Pats fell to 7-7. Seven and seven. Here was the reaction to that play post game. Yeah, I think um, we just got to finish better and obviously tough situation and um, falls on all of us and we just got to do better. So is what it is and tough way to go out, but we got to just watch the tape and get better. We've talked about situational football. We talk about it every week, but we obviously we've got to do a better job playing situational football and not making critical mistakes in the game. Definitely a critical mistake right there. I don't think that was the play call to lateral it back across the field to Mac Jones, and it kind of resulted in how we expected that play to finish. That's all the time we have for sports, though. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. All right, Tyler, thank you. Your full weather is brought to you by Varney Chevrolet. Come see what the Varney value is all about. And let's start here. The temperature results are in from November. It came back as the ninth warmest November on record globally. That's land and ocean temperatures. So on this map, red's above average, blue is below. A lot of red during the month of November. For us, though, holiday travel plans are in full swing, right? So we're good today, good tomorrow, good Wednesday into Thursday. But Friday, Saturday, Sunday... Another big system is on the way. It's likely going to slow down your roll with a rain-snow mix entering the picture this weekend. Today, though, not so much. Highs near 34 here in Bangor, 32 in Millinocket, 30 in Clayton Lake. Uh, so temperatures did what they're supposed to do for late December around here today. It's also kind of windy. Right now, it's out of the really northwest, around 14 miles per hour in Millinocket, 10 in Bangor. Uh, but you get the idea. Kind of a breezy day today. Made temperatures in the 30s feel colder. And now, uh, we got a couple areas of cloud cover and some flurries out there too. In the meantime though, there is a small craft advisory out here for wave heights approaching 8 to 10 feet by early parts of tomorrow morning. Okay, so the satellite picture and radar is an active one currently. There's a little system to the north and east of us that's trying to kind of propagate this way. It's not going to make it very far, but still, it'll get close enough tonight to give us a couple areas of flurries, some light snow showers, maybe a dusting of snow. The problem is the air around here is so dry right now. This air above us is dry as well. So the precipitation kind of flows into that as it falls through the sky and evaporates. So there will not be a lot of precipitation across our area tonight. Uh, not so much said though for later in the week. Here we are, a system here, energy, system there, some energy. That's going to move our direction, likely arriving later Friday into Saturday and probably on Christmas Day as well, as we have quite a system heading our direction. And it looks like we're on that rain snow mix once again, so this weekend's going to be messy around here. For right now though, visibility is looking pretty good, uh, 10 miles or greater across our area. But this is that light snow to the north and east of us. A little bit of this is going to backtrack this way, so. Expect a few flurries across our region tonight. Let's walk you through it. So the light snow and flurries out there tonight, not a big deal. Lots of cloud cover. And then tomorrow we'll go with partly cloudy skies across our area. Not very windy at all with temperatures hanging out in the 30s. Same thing for us into Wednesday and then also into Thursday. And then things begin to change later on Thursday. Again, it's still several days away. We're quiet until then. Our next big weather system gets in here later on Friday into Saturday. And again, big travel plans Friday and Saturday will likely be 
messed up this week uh, with the system in the area. Our forecast then for tonight, though, is lots of cloud cover, a couple flurries out there. It's kind of breezy with low temperatures down near 27. For tomorrow, here we go. Partly cloudy skies, high temperatures back where they kind of were today with a high temperature near 37 and a north wind around 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast shows the story. So tomorrow, upper 30s, same thing for Wednesday and Thursday. There's that rain snow chance on Friday, the high temperature Friday of 53 falling into the 30s on Saturday. The rain snow mix throughout the afternoon. Beth and Peter. Hmm. It'll be really interesting to follow that system as yeah. we get closer to the weekend. A lot of people can be paying attention to that with uh, Christmas taking place this weekend. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's definitely not great to see more inclement weather on the way, but no. the fact that it's, you know, the, what little snow we have, right. it's going to get banished. It's just a little disappointing. <laughs> I'm hoping it just flips to snow and we're all good for the white we Christmas. We still got a chance. <laughs> we do. All right, I'm doing this. All righty. Well, still more to come. Stay with us. When Cat Tracks in LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Cat Tracks in LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Roller Docks with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. Welcome to Bennett's Gems and Jewelry in Belfast. With beautifully crafted gemstone jewelry, you'll be proud to own or give as a gift. See why our longtime customers call Bennett's their favorite gift store with an irresistible selection of genuine Maine tourmaline. Fine jewelry and gemstone giftware. Bennett's Gems also pays cash for your old gold and silver. Open till 6 every day, even Sunday. Bennett's Gems and Jewelry is on Route 1 in Belfast next to Perry's Nuthouse. Look for our famous pink dinosaur and prepare to be delighted. We're a AAA family. We found out about AAA insurance um, through a friend who had actually mentioned it a while ago. We ran the numbers and it totally worked. We looked at the statement for our previous insurer and then AAA insurance. Definitely, we've seen a huge difference. Switch to AAA insurance today and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, Geico, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. By switching over to AAA insurance, we saved over $450. So with our savings, he bought more equipment. More money means more practice equipment. <laughs> In his world. <laughs> Why didn't we do this earlier? Why did yeah, it take so long? We're a AAA family now. AAA insurance it allows us to do so much more with our kids and spend more time with them. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 877-209-5384 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Happy Holidays from the crew at Muffler King Auto in Newport. Tuition-free college courses for high school students online at Maine's top-tier research university. Apply for spring, umaine.edu slash early college. Happy holidays from Sear North Star Tours, offering the Quebec Winter Carnival in February and Annie the Musical February 25th. You would have never thought the Chippendales would be surrounded with murder. The contrast between the fun and then behind the scenes. Let me tell you the part you don't know. It's explosive. 2020, tonight at 9, 8 central on ABC. Welcome you back with some good news for motorists. Gas prices in Maine have fallen seven and a half cents in the last week. According to Gas Buddy's survey of more than 1,200 stations around the state, the average price is now $3.48 a gallon. That's 41 and a half cents a gallon less than a month ago. The national average of diesel has fallen just over 14 cents a gallon in the past week. That stands at $4.77 a gallon. Patrick Dehan, who's head of petroleum analysis for Gas Buddy, says the national average for a gallon of gasoline is down nearly two bucks compared to six months ago. And heading into Christmas travel week, it's at least it's it's at its lowest in a year and a half. 
Definitely some good news there. We just need to keep it going downward, that is for sure. Well, finally tonight, an adventure company in Penobscot County called She Summits is inviting women and girls of all ages to enjoy the Maine outdoors. She Summits was founded in 2019 as a way to help women feel comfortable navigating through the Maine woods and waters. The company takes participants hiking, kayaking, rock climbing, and biking throughout the state. The instructors and Maine guides who work for She Summits also teach participants how to be good stewards of the land. Amanda Hatley is the group's founder. The parks that we recreate in here in Maine were on all public lands, and so we really look to um, not only recreate on the land, but also care about it and teach young girls how to care about it as well. Hatley says the company is planning a snowshoe adventure this coming January, and those interested in participating can learn more at shesummitsco.com. Mm. Love it. That's so cool, and uh, what a great opportunity to get out in snowshoe. Like, yeah. I mean, Maine is just perfect for getting all of the elements uh, in all the seasons, And in a too. group, too. Like, if, you, if you're somebody who wants to do more outdoors, but right. you don't want to do it by yourself, especially yeah. if you're new to the particular activity, that's yeah. a great solution to getting out there and indulging your adventurer side. A really welcoming environment uh, is never a bad thing. Yeah. I would agree. <laughs> all righty, folks, that's going to do it for us. From everybody here at ABC7, take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone.